All right, another day. We're back with our trash pump motor. It's not a trash, it's a trashy water pump. So it's not bad, it's just, uh, that's what they call them here. Pulled on it a bunch. We've got spark, we've got compression. I think we're okay, even though we flooded with water. But I think we need to, uh, we're not making any liquids happen in the old uh, carburetor. So I think what we're gonna do is take the carburetor apart, give it a good cleaning. Everything that's been saturated with water has also been filled with some sort of gumpy material. And that's probably plugging our fuel passages and making it hard to do anything. So we'll grab a, another bowl here. And let's just go ahead and take the whole carburetor assembly apart and walk through it to clean it. And uh, go from there. I think after that, we can actually try one thing before we do anything. If I take this off, I should be able to squirt some gasoline down its throat and get it to bark. And if that's the case, we're definitely looking at a carburetor problem, and that would be great to know. I really would like to get a little runtime on the oil so that we can swap it out again with some good oil and give it back to our customer. There's actually a screw underneath the, a little Phillips screw right there that's holding this little plate on. There's our carb assembly and our throttle assembly with that weird little screw there. Cute, but annoying. Let's just take it out out so we don't lose it. And then we can just let that flap around. And I can, no, that'll work. Sideways will bend out of the way easier. So now we have our access to all our throttle, our choke, and our fuel on offline. That is, according to this, Fuel is that way, so that is off position. So this is the on position. This is our choke. Our carburetor's just barely sitting on there, so let's go ahead and try to start it. That sounds like fun. Wonder if we, how bad it's gonna be up here. I think that switch has been disconnected. Should be able to get it started on choke, if it will start at all. We'll gas down the app. Way too much. Perfect. Sauce is not gonna shoot right in my face, that's nice. Let's see if we can get a hello. Yeah, that catch is annoying. That was a hello. So, we are alive. Backfiring pretty bad. Close enough. So we're having fuel issues. Lots of fire too. But anyway, so that's okay. Let's continue on. Let's set that here and we'll take this tank and put it in there and all sorts of fun going on. So here we have our slow motion pan shot because my tripod's a little loose. Um, there's our clamp for our fuel line. Then we have our governor. But uh, let's see if we can get this line over and quickly dump it over here. Capture the gas that's in that tank. I'm sure there's probably more than that little catch can I have is worth. So that'll be a hot mess when we're all said and done. Stir in the tank, if there's any crap in there. Oh, oh, oh. That's fine. Right, 
right, so we got that zip tied up right here so it stopped dripping. And then I'm looking in the tank, looking at all the floaties. And yeah, this is what's coming out. A hot, rusty mess. And that's going, there's no fuel filter in these, right? It just goes straight to the carburetor. So even if we did, there's chunks in it too. I don't know if you can see the chunks. How well you can see the chunks. There was nothing in my thing before. Those are just chunks of stuff. So we're just, yeah. We may actually need to come in and see what's happening is it's actually my fuel line's plugging with stuff. It's just got water and rust and... With our discovery of all that water and the gas, that was a totally good move to pull that out. Now with our tank not actually attached, our carburetor actually rolls freely on the two studs here. Let's pull this little super duper spring and let's do some math as to uh, get some sealant there. How we're gonna get this guy out. We're hung on something again. Something's... Oh, I see. The top doesn't... No way. So the top of the doesn't actually escape the mechanism here for the governor. That's interesting. That is totally what that is. So, <sighs> do we have to undo all of this? There's one there, one there. Maybe we can get away with these two nuts to release the plate up so we can get the carburetor out. Oh my goodness. Sometimes I think I agree when I they say they don't build them like they used to. Now we're getting into a hotter mess with springs because this is bolted to, I just need to lift the front out of the way. So I can get the carburetor. Easy there, fella. The carburetor out of the way. It's that over there. Now can we, oh yeah, the whole assembly's loose. Perfect. Don't want to mess with it. Just want it out of the way. Yeah, look at that, and it pops right out. Didn't actually get to see the rod. It just sticks in. It's got a little, just sticks in. It's got that little catch right there. Where's my finger? There it is. So it just sneaks in and down, so. That's our carburetor, is our gasket right there behind it. We're gonna leave that there, but now we have our independent assembly, which is filthy. So we're gonna take this, pull it back, bring y'all down here. <clears throat> pull this very dirty assembly out. Right size or wrong size? Wrong size. Correct size at 10 mil. Let's take the bowl off again. Hope the gasket's still good. And uh, clean the whole thing off. I'm gonna put some gloves on too. Not that it's not too late, but it's too late. But I just don't wanna deal with all the mess. That was holding fuel, so that's cool. Yeah, things are looking up here. More crap in the bowl. That's good news, I guess. Looking over here. That's all plastic, so you're good. The spacer panel and yeah. It's watery, but that's fine. It'll go away. They use the air intake to hold the Spark plug wire. It's efficient use, I guess, of materials. Back to over here. Let me just wipe these shafts down. I left my carburetor cleaner here. Let's put this in our crap gas pile. Okay. Let me throw some gloves on here. Okay. 
to get this jet out, what I've done is I've taken a regular screwdriver and just kind of gr bench ground, use a bench grinder, and just took the ears off it a little bit. So it's still effective as a screwdriver, but it fits in the hole and gets great contact. Let's me back this thing out, inspect it, poke some holes, see how we're doing. That's a scenario. I want you. Don't be shy. All friends here. There we go. There it is in there. Uh, look at this thing. Hi, Mud. How's it going? Those are all plugged up. So let's go ahead and poke those free. Clear this out. I spent all that time cleaning up those holes. I just wipe it with a dirty rag and yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Don't you worry. Plunk for that. Now, how we can tell is the narrow end goes up into the passage of the carburetor and then this plugs the whole mess up. And we'll stick that in there and no need to put anti-season here because that's just going to gum everything up. And the orientation of where the bowl sits is, needs is specific, right? So this is actually carp. Okay, so this was towards the... We landed this way. We have the opportunity to make sure our gasket's bang on. Yeah, it faced out, so I think we're good with that. We attach this girl, and I think we're good to stick it back on there and put some stuff back on, see how we do. It'll go down the hole and then it locks in and lift that up and ta-da, and that's like so. And then the spring wants to go below the rod. Bam. So, oh, fair enough, let's uh, stick it all back together again. Hip hip hooray, got all that all assembled. Uh, what you saw me kind of dancing around with this screw that's here and that one's there is that they're actually two different lengths and there's a shorty and a long. And I put the two longs holding on the throttle assembly bracket but apparently only one was. Kind of a cost savings. We're putting my favorite liquid in, sea foam. Fortunately that's gonna send a shot right to the carburetor. That means we're not gonna fire off right away. We're gonna have all that crap in there. But whatever doesn't go down, it's gonna come back and be mixed in with our gasoline. Now this gasoline I use that figure lightly. 
Not that it's crap, but I've noticed that like fuel here in Alberta, uh, fuel from UFA just stinks. It does not smell like the sweet nectarine of normal gasoline. It actually uh, smells quite a bit worse. So let's just go ahead and bump, I don't know, half a gallon in here. I only want half a tank. I don't want to give away the, we're good with that apparently. That's fine, that's lots. So now we got a big shot of uh, sea foam in there, big shot of gasoline, of actual gasoline. Hopefully the sea foam will help take care of the rest of any water it finds in there. There's a bunch of stuff probably all stirred up, but that's what the intake screen's for. <laughs> so we're cool there. So next up is, I think I'm gonna take it to the ground. I think we're okay without our paneling and without our air filter. Sometimes they like the restriction of an air filter. In fact, why don't we do that? This air filter is wet probably. It is actually wet, physically wet. So it's one of the places our water is coming in. We don't need the pre-filter, that's 100% sure. So let's not. Now, I've got two caps here. This might have been for this, might have been for something else. I don't remember. And I still have a bolt left over and the screw, but a bolt left over from something. I don't remember what. I'm pretty sure it wasn't in there when I started the project, but the little black guy here. Hmm. Oh, it was held on the side there. So we're okay, we're all set. Yeah, I think we're good. And I think this plug is actually a, a water plug for the pump. It's over here with the water pump stuff, which we haven't actually touched yet. So um, fuel is now, actually it wasn't going in, it's on. And I forget, the choke is one of these directions. We'll figure it out because we'll pull on it a ton and it'll do something or it won't. <laughs> We'll switch it the other way and we'll pull on it some more and then it will and it won't. But we know the ignition system is igniting. So let's go ahead and move you to the floor and I'm going to move it to the floor and check the oil and then cross my fingers. Such faith I actually put my hearing protection on. Did check the oil. It does have oil. Throttle probably still works. It's um. Uh, Maybe that's choke. I can't remember. Let's yank on it till it runs. Let's try that anyway. Easy fella. button does work how about that so all the oil is from where I've squirted oil all over the thing anyway and uh, what I'm gonna do is reassemble the water pump side of it then we'll run it some more and then we'll change the oil and then I'm gonna make it go away because we'll give it back to our customer there but I think we got it I think we're all right but let's put the pump back together real quick I'll time lapse you on that we'll put it back up on the counter and uh, yeah we'll run it and it is what it is So the uh, oil already looks bad. So we're just gonna change it now. Run it some more, change it again, and then we're probably okay. Tell the customer to change it again for the season and whenever they do that, be it the spring, fall, or if ever. So, but we'll just make sure we're cool there. Boy, what size is that? I must have it on a socket. Bam, yeah, of course I do. So we'll just uh, shoot it into the mud here.
Oil changed again, topped off a little with some sea foam. Um, honestly, probably want to go the Lucas oil route with this, but I will do that on the last fill. This is a cleaning run. We're going to run the heck out of it. Inspect the oil one more time. Hopefully it's going to have burnt off a bunch of the crap that's in there. The valve cover and all the fun stuff involved with that. And we will be good to go. So hopefully it'll start. Hopefully we'll run it for a bunch and uh, fill up our closet full of smoke. Oil all over this thing, remember? So I'm expecting that for a while. Okay, let's see, let's back this up a little bit so it doesn't get oil all over my counter. Just enough to slip off, we're cool. Okay, that's, uh, we ran it quite a bit. Air intake was obviously a restriction. It's wet with oil or something, water. It needs to get replaced. So we'll give that to the customer to say, hey, next time you're at PV Mart or Home Hardware or some Canadian hardware store, still a pile of crap water in there. I think we're, we're good with that. It's, it's still bad but it's getting better every time we do it. And uh, I don't want to change oil too many times. It's just a lot of oil. So we'll throw some Lucas and some 10W30 in there. Fill it up to the brim with brim and we'll hand it to the customer saying, A, you need an air filter. B, you need uh, to change your oil. Um, next time you run it, run it and then change your oil again. And you should be set. I think that's kind of where we're at with now. If you have any questions, that's where I'm going, that's where we're ending it here. If you have any questions on this motor, how many hours, no idea. Where to get it, no idea. Anything, no idea. Um, feel free to ask. Uh, if you have any comments, like, man, you have no idea what you're doing, that's cool too. Um, maybe I did overkill. Probably not, because it's barely running now. Uh, and subscribe to my channel, Turbo231, for more small motor vehicle, uh, engines big motor engines got a big fiero project coming up this winter time we're going to take apart an iron duke um, other fiero projects we're cooking on they'll be coming out by the time this thing comes out and uh you guys have a good day i guess i'll do slow-mo on dripping oil that'd be all right let's try that